I've been fixing small engines for quite some time now and I find it very rewarding at least when it comes to getting the results that I want. However, things don't always go according to plan and even though I have a pretty good idea on how stuff works, sometimes I get it wrong. And this Honda mower is a great example of that very thing. This one is going to test my patience and have me questioning my ability to make good choices because the results were far from desirable. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Honda lawnmower, and the problem is that it starts and runs, but the self-propel is not working like it should. Now, you could always just use it as a push mower, and believe me, that's how I've been using mine. But what if I want to try and sell this mower and get as much money for it as possible? I want to make sure it's working, otherwise I might be stuck with another Honda mower. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. So what do I know about this mower? Well, I found this mower by using a website where you can find free stuff being given away, and in that ad, they didn't say much about it. All it said was that it needed a new pull string mechanism, as they put it, but they did say that it will start and run. However, they made no claims for how the self-propel works. So of course, I can't blame them for it because they gave away a very expensive mower for nothing. So I'm just going to take it and be happy about it. But if we can get this drive to work, it'll make this free mower 20 times better. So how exactly is the self-propel not working then? Well, this is the strange part. It does work. When you activate it, the wheels do spin, but only when the wheels are off the ground. That at least tells me that the drive belt is not broken and that the cable to activate it is not an issue either. So my best guess is that the belt is worn out. Of course, the best way to describe a problem is to show it to you. Now, this was before I fixed the choke system, so I'll have to prime it to start it. So as you can see, when I activate the drive, the wheels do spin. However, that's only when the wheels are off the ground. But when on the ground, the wheels will not spin. So I'm pretty certain that the belt is the issue, and it's not all that expensive to replace either, which is a huge plus. But the strange part was that the self-propel didn't work in any of the speeds I selected, which I thought would have made some difference even if the belt was worn out. Now there is one other option we can check, but for some reason I don't think it's a cause for this issue, which is needing to adjust the cable. And the reason is that the self-propel still engages with the lever, so I don't think it's the issue. And when we inspect the belt and see the witness mark on the pulley, it would make sense that a worn belt is the most likely cause for the problem. So for me, I think replacing the belt is the better choice, and as you'll see here in a bit, I may want to reconsider that idea. Now here's the problem. I've been told that replacing the belt on one of these is a real pain. I have replaced the belt on one of these Hondas before, but that one had a metal mowing deck. Now that one was pretty tough, and I really don't want to do it again, so I knew going into this repair that this was not going to be fun, and I hate to admit it, but this one was even tougher than the last one. So if you don't have a lot of patience or find a way to release some of that frustration, you may want to pass on doing this job. After removing all the pieces for the retaining ring, you won't be able to remove the shutter just yet until you unbolt the lever arm from it, but there's a big problem. The metal base that the arm is bolted to wanted to spin with the bolt, and out of desperation, I had to put some screws in it to keep it from doing that. After disconnecting the nut and the bolt, we can now take off the shutter and move on to removing the lever arm. I'm also going to remove the pin so I don't lose it. Now at this point, all we have to do is remove this plastic rear section of the mowing deck and get to the belt. Now this part is a bit tricky to do because there's a metal sleeve in the upper part that might get in the way. And of course there's also one more captive nut and bolt you need to take out and hopefully it doesn't get stuck otherwise you're in for a lot of work to get it loose. So here's that metal sleeve and it's meant to act as a brace so that it won't crack the plastic when tightening that bolt but it also gets in the way when taking out the plastic part. Now you can take the sleeve out before you start to take the plastic out but with the way the mower was sitting I didn't realize it until it was too late. After getting the old belt out of the mower, I'll compare it to the new one, and as you can see, there's a big difference between them. Now, I didn't measure them, but I'd say that the old belt was missing at least 25%, which could be enough to cause our problems. So here's where things get really tough if you didn't think just getting to this part was tough enough. Now, getting the belt back on the pulley isn't tough at all, and then getting the spring back on the arm is pretty easy. 
but having to work the belt onto the drive pulley while trying to fight against the spring is the tough part. So this part of the repair is where you can either overpower the spring or you can try to outsmart it. It's almost a shame that I don't have any friends to help out at this point of the project, but after they realize that I'm just using them for help, I'm pretty sure the relationship would be a bit strained. I'm going to have to apologize to you because I've omitted several attempts to get this on camera, so I'm going to say this out loud. This is much more difficult than how I'm showing it to be. Now after that struggle, I had to sit down for a few minutes, but after that, I was ready to put all the clean parts back onto this mower. Now typically the reassembly takes longer than the disassembly, but not in this case, and that's because there were so many stuck bolts and spinning brackets that had to be fixed the first time around. So putting them back on was a breeze in comparison. I should have this mower back on the ground in no time then. Now I don't know if you can tell by the footage, but this was filmed over the course of a few days. That's how difficult this fix can be, so just be ready to spend a couple of hours on this repair. In fact, I had to look over the footage I already filmed to help me put this back together since it took a few days for the belt to arrive in the mail. After that though, putting it back together was pretty simple, and even though most times I don't need to look at pictures or videos to help me put it back together, I think it's a great tool to use though. And besides that, unless you have a photographic memory, it's only going to get worse as time goes by, so working around the issue just makes sense. So for me, the biggest issue is having to deal with the shutter, and for those of you who don't know what this is, it's used to block off the chute to the bagging area. They designed it so that you can vary the amount of grass you wanted mulched from what you wanted bagged, which doesn't make sense to me. I would think that you wanted all or none, so I'm not sure why you want to vary the amount that's being bagged. So on the Honda mower that I use, it comes with a plug that you put in, and it was meant to either block off the chute or leave it wide open. And on some other models, there was this kind of shutter on it as well, but it was either opened or closed and never had anything in between. So in my mind, I find this particular style kind of strange, and if you know why you'd want to be able to bag part of the grass and yet mulch the other part, I'd like to hear about it. Now you could apply some grease or some kind of spray lube on the shutter, but you might not want to do that, and that's because any dirt or grass clippings might get stuck in it and cause the shutter to be difficult to move or just get stuck. After it's installed, try opening and closing the shutter just to make sure it's working like it should, and if there are any issues, you can fix it now instead of later. Of course, for me, I'm going to leave them in the closed position because, honestly, I think these are great mulching mowers. Then I'll put the blades back on after having sharpened them, of course. Now, these dual blades are the reason why I think they mulch so well, even when compared to other mulching mowers with special blades. While I have this chance, I'm also going to lubricate the bearings in each of the wheels and also clean and lubricate the drive gears as well. Now, you can take the gear off if you really want to do a proper cleaning and lubrication of the key, but doing it this way is still better than doing nothing at all. Just remember to use brake cleaner on the gear first, that way you can get rid of some of the dirt and grime before you apply the lube to it. So why not just take the gear off? Why am I being so lazy? Simple, because of a risk. So if you didn't know it, the key is spring loaded at the end of the shaft, so you run the risk of losing the spring and the key if you're not careful, and if you do, you're going to have a bad day. And if that's not bad enough, did you notice which way the drive gear was facing when you took it off? Because if you put it back wrong, your drive will not work like it's supposed to. Like I said, keeping the gear on and lubricating it from the outside is not the best way to do it, but the risk involved doing it the other way is so high I would recommend not doing it that way. Now in the cleaning video, I showed you how to clean the recoil spring by using the same method as the drive gear, by leaving it all together and spraying cleaner into the spring area. But this time I'm going to replace the rope because for some reason I think it's about a foot shorter than it's supposed to be. And after looking at the end of the rope that was inside the pulley, I think my suspicions were correct. I think at some point it broke and they fixed it by just using the leftover rope, but why did it break? Probably because they couldn't get it to start and was pulling on it a lot harder than they needed to, which finally caused it to break. I'm going to say this because I like sounding like a broken record player, but if you need to pull on the rope as hard as you can and also need to pull it more than several times, then there's something wrong with the carb or the engine and it needs to be fixed. You should be able to pull on the rope with a slow and continuous motion and get it to start without getting out of breath or having your arm cramp up after pulling it more than several times. Now this only applies to larger engines like a mower, snowblower, tiller, or even a go-kart. It's a bit different if you're talking about two-stroke machines. That's the reason, if I can, I'll include the shot of me pulling on the rope to start it, hoping that you can see that I'm not straining myself and I'm not pulling on it all that quickly either. But then again, it is your machine, so start it however you like, but once the rope breaks while trying to start it, don't worry, I won't say anything. Once the new rope is on the pulley for the recoil and after putting some fresh oil into the engine, I think it's time to see if the self-propel works.
So unfortunately, after all that work, the drive belt did not make it any better. Now at this point, there's only one other thing that I want to do, which is to adjust the anchor for the drive cable, and hopefully that fixes the issue. I was also being really stingy and only put a few ounces of fuel into the tank, so I'll add a bit more, then try again. Hopefully this works, otherwise it means we have a bad transmission. Well, I hate to admit this, but I should have tried to adjust the cable first before trying to replace the belt. Because in the end, I ended up replacing a belt that was not broken, paid for extra parts I didn't need, and wasted a lot of time replacing it. Instead, it only took me a few minutes to make the adjustments to get the self propelled to work, and I could have sold the mower by now. But then again, I guess I learned a great life lesson and learned a lot about the machine while trying to repair it. So I guess I know what I'm going to do the next time I'm faced with multiple choices. I'm going to choose the one that will take the least amount of time and hopefully it's not the most expensive option either. Then move on to the next item which then leaves the last option which is more than likely the one that's going to take the most time. You can always pay a little bit more money for stuff but you can't get your time back and that's the reason why so many people won't do anything because they're afraid they're going to waste their time on it especially if they know they can't fix it. But we all have to start somewhere when learning how to fix stuff, whether that's at work, tech school, or in your own garage. So have I wasted a lot of time working on stuff before? You bet I have, but that's how I learned by making terrible mistakes and paying for them with my time, and this mower is a prime example. So I guess what I'm saying is that I may have wasted a lot of my time on this unneeded repair, but the knowledge I've gained from this experience is invaluable, at least from my perspective. Now someone else who's watching me may feel a bit differently about the whole situation, but that's perfectly fine and hopefully maybe they'll learn what not to do just like I did. So my question is, have you ever tried fixing something and it turned out not to be the right choice? I don't think I need to answer this one. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects and I hope to see you in the next video.